Hey, this is Kenji again. Uh, I'm about to make some of my creamy, creamless tomato soup. It's like a 15 minute recipe that uses basically all pantry ingredients. Um, canned tomatoes, dried oregano, garlic, uh, olive oil, a little red pepper flake, and some bread. And that's about it. Um, it starts exactly the same way as the pizza sauce that I made for this other video. Um, here? Here? I don't know. Point, I'm going to point to somewhere and then the link is going to appear somewhere in here. Uh, it starts the same way as the sauce for that video, so I actually just decided in the middle of that video to come and make this one. So uh, there's going to be some overlap. So if you've already seen the sauce making portion of the pizza video, it's about to repeat again now so you can skip over to, I don't know, scrub until you find the right place. All right, here we go. All right, let's try this again. Olive oil. And garlic. I had some mac and cheese left over on it. Not too hot. Pepper flakes. Some dried oregano. Oregano. Um, oregano is one of those herbs that actually works really well dried. Um, generally, like herbs that are hardier leaves, like oregano, marjoram, thyme, sage. Those tend to do pretty well when they're dried. Uh, rosemary, it's the herbs like um, parsley, basil, chives, like those really more delicate ones that just don't do well dried. Um, and it's because those hardier herbs, um, their volatiles are actually less volatile. Um, their, their aromas are less volatile, so they don't, um, and it's because they grow in hotter climates, so they don't want all that stuff evaporating out of them. Um, so generally like hardier herbs, their flavors tend to, tend to stick as they dry better than um, more delicate herbs. So I would never use like dried parsley or basil or chervil or chives, but I would definitely, um, I would use, you know, oregano thyme, oregano thyme, marjoram, savory. I don't know, who, when, who uses savory? I don't know when you would use savory. I'd probably use it like twice in my life. Um, you can go in with a hand blender. You can buy crushed tomatoes if you want. Oh, these are, um, these are, Oh, they're not, uh, they're not the San Marzano's. Um, this brand, Cento, also makes San Marzano's. Um, this is just plain old Italian style. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not as picky as most people are about their tomatoes. I usually get Cento uh, DOP San Marzano's from Italy, or I get um, uh, Mir Glen, which are from the US, and consistently win like taste tests. Oh, this is a, um, a pastry cutter. This is what people, you use this to um, cut butter into flour when you're making pie dough and stuff like that. Um, I think it's great for making like a rough textured tomato sauce like this. Just chops it right up. Season with some salt. Uh, people ask me if, um, I don't know, if we always, if I always use that, some, that much salt, I'm, I don't know, you know, I, I, I was trained in restaurants and we use a lot of salt in restaurants and I have a, you know, I'm the chef at a, chef partner at a beer hall um, and we want our customers to drink beer so you know we make the food nice and salty I would call it properly seasoned I would say most people under season their food and this is properly seasoned but you know that's just kind of a arrogant chef's way of looking at it um, salt it to whatever level you like it I like it with plenty of salt mm. all right those are gonna take about 10 to 12 minutes or so um, and in the meantime what are we gonna do Oh, I have an idea. I'm gonna take, so it turns out that this tomato sauce that I just made, it's essentially the same as the base for um, this uh, creamy tomato soup recipe I have. Um, I did a version of it for America's Test Kitchen and I also did a version of it on Serious Heats. Um, you can find the re recipe, those recipes at either of those sites. They're slightly different from each other. Um, this one also is gonna be probably different from what's, what's shown there, but the main idea is that what you do is you take canned tomatoes, you cook them down with some oregano, uh, some pepper flakes, some garlic, and then we're gonna puree it and we're gonna emulsify it with um, olive oil. And the trick to getting it really nice and creamy without adding any cream to it is that we're gonna use some bread. Um, so it's almost like a hot gazpacho. Like a, hot, a gazpacho is a, um, a tomato soup. Um, well, it's really an olive oil and bread soup flavored with tomatoes, but a gazpacho, traditional Spanish gazpacho, like Andalusian gazpacho, it's um, thickened with bread and emulsified with olive oil. So that's what we're gonna do here, and you'll see it's gonna get really nice, creamy texture. Um, I'm gonna pull this out into a completely separate video, by the way, so that you can, uh, so that 
I don't know. People just want this recipe, they'll do it. Here, in fact, I'll give it an announcement. All right, this is the middle of my pizza video. I'm gonna put a link to my pizza video uh, up, up there, I think, that's what I'll do. Um, but uh, I have this extra sauce, so I'm gonna turn it into this creamy tomato soup that's uh, dairy-free. The nice thing about making it dairy-free is that, um, <clears throat> nice thing about making it dairy-free is that uh, the flavor is much sort of cleaner. It doesn't, the, fla the tomato flavor doesn't uh, get muted the way uh, dairy can make it mute. Can get it muted. Um, you just want like white sandwich bread. This is potato bread, um, but you know any kind of white generic sandwich bread will do. Um, you could also use sourdough, whatever. Um, I don't know why I composted those. I should have saved those. Anyhow, I'm working fast. I guess. All right, tear it up in there. Oops, that's my daughter again. Hang on. Okay, back. So I got the bread. And those cooked tomatoes in there. Um, again, you know, you can find a recipe online that I wrote um, if you want the exact ratios, but I never follow the exact ratios when I'm doing it at home. Let's put the lid on here. We're gonna get our olive oil. And I always wanna start your blender slow. And slowly build up speed. I'm also going to add a little bit of water because it's a little too thick. Let's taste that and see where we're at. Looks good. Looks tasty. Mm. It is tasty. Mm. This is gonna be dinner for dinner for us. Pizza and tomato soup. All right, and that's how you make my creamy, creamless tomato soup. Should we make it look pretty in a bowl or something? Here, how about we do this? Do that. Let's give it a little garnish of basil. Maybe a little bit of cracked pepper and olive oil. There you go. Now don't that look good? It is good. All right, we're gonna get back to the pizza.